So today we are creating this FX in Blender and trust me, it's really easy if you really really follow me step by step without skipping. To start, let's take Suzanne, our hottest monkey and add subdivision modifier by pressing Ctrl 3 which is a shortcut. Also I'll right click and share it smooth and then we can apply it in the modifier section. We have to make a moving gradient like this one for that let's head to the vertex data tab go into edit mode and select any one vertex on our susan and then create a new group with this plus icon and then assign that vertex to that group but how is this going to do that gradient thingy easy you will first bring that vertex inside of the geometry node so what we can do is just divide the panel right here change this to geometry node editor add another plane in our scene like this selecting this plane create a new one and just delete the group input that we don't need what we need is the suzanne you can just drag it in here and make sure to set it to relative now you can connect this to the group output now Let's use a named attribute and bring our vertex group we just made. To see what's happening, let's use a delete geometry node and then use a shortest edge path node. Connect the name attribute to the end vertex and use value node and connect to the edge coast, setting the value to 1. I know it's not making any sense, but it will soon. And finally, we'll connect the total cost to the selection, but nothing is happening. So let's view our data as it's all white. If we use a math node in between and we will set it to add and you change, if we change the value now, you get something like this. Let's connect it back to the like geometry node and you will get this. Also, let's animate it right away. Also make sure to change the point to the faces. You might still be wondering why it's not working like the gradient was working. That is because we have to hide our original Suzanne and now it seems to be working. So to keyframe it, I will just go to the first frame and press I on the add value. So mine value is something like that. Then I will go to like 150th frame and then just decrease the value or increase the value as per the case so that a whole mesh starts appearing until the whole mesh is visible that looks good and i will press again i and insert a keyframe on this value and that should do for me now that we got the basic thing done we are going to create three pipelines three different pipelines for this so Let's just first use a join geometry right away so that we can connect those three different pipelines. The first pipeline is going to contain our original mesh. What I can just do is duplicate this and bring it right here and just connect it back in the join geometry node. Second one we have already created but it's not visible as you can see. For that Let's use a set position node then we will use a noise texture and a normal node and connect them to multiply math node. Make sure to use the vector math node not the simple math node and connect it to the offset but it is too powerful right now. So let's dial it down using a scale and set it to 0.01 perfect now it's visible. The reason for using the noise texture is to just give it some details and also to check if it's working or not. Now we have to make the third pipeline. I want the effect to come on these edges. So first let's duplicate our original mesh and whole setup above and connect them and finally join to the geometry. Also connect our animation part to it. Now let's just visualize this mesh only by ctrl left shift clicking. Now to just get the border we will use two different nodes. First one will be the color ramp and if we set it to something like this between our animated path and the delete geometry we will get something like this but that is the exact opposite of what we want so we can use a map range after that and invert the result by pressing one 
and zero nothing is truly visible for that we can add another node just duplicate this one and change this to divide connect it right here as well and we can just change the value a bit and then finally reduce down this max value to get the border that we wanted now if we start animating it you will see this kind of result but we have one problem that is it's spawning in too fast so we can reduce down the divide value so let's set it to 10 for now so it's already spawning way before what we can do is just go to this value and change around with this value like that and that will be the starting of our mesh now that we got that area we can spawn in some points using distribute points on faces and setting it to 1000 for now then use instance on point and connect the curve line node to replace those points with the curve also let's make this line like 0.2 meter tall because we don't want them to be super tall so let's first fix how they are acting very weird so by simply connecting it to a simulation zone and then connect a joint geometry in between that simulation zone and finally connecting all those curves to that joint geometry so that they don't act weird and they will look something like this but they should actually disappear as well so for that we will use a delete geo node and then store a named attribute which will be called age using the named attribute typing age inside of it just to name it to actually give the threads age add a math node to set to add and add a value of one to it so it will add an age of one every frame use the same attribute and plug it into the selection selection of the delete geo node and to delete anything after a certain time use greater than node ie which is which is the compare and set to 20 so that and so anything when spawned will only last for 20 frames using the same system we can give them a really cool effect duplicate the same and set the attribute name to t and connect the name attribute to start of a trim curve node now if you play it's kind of too much value to see the result so let's just set the value to 0 0.02 and we got this it looks good but not that great but once we do the next step it would really amazing before we go ahead with the final magic i want to just tell you that how we created so many different object info duplicate i just want you to use the single one only and just connect it in this way as i've connected it to the delete geometry and the second one as well and the original going to the joint geometry now the catch here is we have to store a data using this store named attribute then you can just connect all of them with this and now what we have to store is the normal data of our Suzanne mesh so we can connect it right to the value and just name it n n n also make sure to change it to vector because normal is a vector value now going back to the finishing effect as you can see i'm using a set position just before the simulation zone and connect it in between right here the next node that you would need is the geo proximity and also you might have to duplicate the object info right here so it can get you the data you want and connect it to the geometry right here we can connect it directly to the position but we would need one more thing to connect to it as you can see something is happening now you can connect this to here and i will use the named attribute changing it to the triple n thing and connect it back in now the normal value is way too much high so i'm gonna use scale node just before it because it's too powerful right now and i will just scale it down to 0 0.01 we have one final problem and that is why it's not looking still good if this is the final magic thingy that is because we don't have enough geometry on our spline or the curve lines so what we can do is first use realize instances my bad after realizing them use a resample curve node now if we as soon as we connect it to this 
I am connected back to the set position. You will see the result as it's snapping way perfectly than before. As there are hairs growing on our mesh. You can increase the count to get the desired result but 10 was good enough for me so I will just keep it at that. Now the next thing is I have already prepared these things for us. So the first thing that I am going to do is just first of all use this curve to mesh because we want to convert this curve to a mesh and it will ask us what kind of curve profile you want to use to make it to a mesh. So I am going to use arc and connect it to the profile curve. I have set the resolution to 4. You are using as less geometry as possible so it works really fast. For the radius that doesn't matter. I will just set it to 0 0.25, 0 0.025. Then the main thing is the set curve radius. Now the value doesn't matter here right now. What matters is using this setup. This spline parameter gives us the length of every curve. So if you connect it like this, you can see they are very sharp at the bottom and very thick at the top. But if you want to change around with the result, you want it opposite. So for example, I will use a color ramp in between and if you just switch it around like this make the white one go left and black one go right so they will look sharper on the top and thicker on the bottom but if you want a, another different kind of result what i would suggest is just use white in between and black on left and right so you get this kind of result just reduce the radius as well as it doesn't seem too perfect for me and lastly, if you have already some kind of material with you, you can just use a set material just after the curve to mesh and before the joint geometry because you only want the materials to apply to the curves. So I have already a dark marble texture type thingy. It will look like something growing. We also want this texture on our second geometry, which is the above one, this one. This is the wrong one. It should be on this one. And let's see the result. Now, as you can see, there's a gap between our curves and our mesh which is forming up. Do you remember when we created this animation system? What we can just do is duplicate another divide node, change it to add and put it just between our second Tilicio. There's too much gap. Let's try adjusting the value so it catches up with that. To finish more perfectly as you might have seen on Suzanne, the effect was quite a big. So what we can originally do is go back to the original mesh and you can just enlarge it. So they should look something like this for now, which looks more detailed and more better. By the way, if you want this blend file, I will just add the link in the description so you can directly get this one. Now this is just very simple and smooth effect going on here. The original thing had very chaotic effect on it. What we can simply do is go back to the set position where we use this joint geometry. Ignore this one. We don't need this. So what we can just do is duplicate these two nodes right here. Just connect it to here. The next node that we would need is the noise texture so that we can make it more chaotic and connect it to the vector right here. And then finally make sure to connect it to the position. Make sure to uncheck the normalize and if you try changing the value of the scale as you can see these things are moving. Now, right now, the effect of our noise is very, very low. So I will set to 0.01 for now so that we can see a bit of more of the effect on it. As you can see, it's affecting it way more than before. Let's try putting more details into it. And also let's try reducing down the scale value as well. Now, this is a bit of more chaotic. Set it according to your needs. Also, I'll switch this to 40. One last trick you can do is just create a value node here, connect it to the W and press the value hashtag frame divided by 50 gives more varied result that was the whole effect guys and if you like this tutorial make sure to subscribe and give a sub that would really help me and my channel so thanks for watching and have a nice day